Well, hey folks, my name is Brad, and if you're new to my channel, typically my videos don't take place in a studio. I'm up in the mountains of Vermont with my metal detector, finding treasures from, if I'm lucky, the early 1700s. But about a month and a half ago, I was invited out of Vermont and found things over a hundred years older than I'd ever found before. And on top of that, they were from a Native American trade site, a place where natives were actively trading with Europeans. So I was finding arrowheads and jewelry made out of brass kettles, iron artifacts, lead musket balls, and the day ended with an incredible brass ring given to a native by a Jesuit. It was absolutely the trip of a lifetime. And so I had to pinch myself when I was invited a second time. I went back and that is what this video is. And I can honestly say some of the things that were found on this trip, uh, you have to see to believe. Much like last time for the privacy of the person who invited me and the landowner who allowed us to be there, I do not pan the camera above the horizon. You will not see any faces and the only voice you will hear is mine. So without any further ado, the return to the Native American trade site. All right, well, even though I've got six of these now, I'm still excited about finding another one. First one of the day, uh, we have a kettle brass point. There were several comments on the last video when we were finding these, suggesting that they were not kettle points, but in fact were bangles meant to be worn as decoration. And from what my friend has told me and the research that I've done on my own, bangles the hole would be up here to be hung like this. And uh, there are actually examples that were excavated where these are still affixed to wooden shafts and the sinew would have gone across the wood and through, the, through this hole. So uh, that is most certainly what this is. And also a lot of questions asking how they would have made it and they would have had scissors or with a, with a chisel. Incredible, so cool. First one of the day. Well, this is the, the biggest, heaviest piece of kettle brass that I've seen. Obviously, it wouldn't have been on the kettle like this. It was cut and then rolled for some purpose, whether that be a hair pipe. It seems heavy, though, for that. Super cool. Biggest, biggest chunk I've seen so far. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I, I showed some fragments of these in the last video. And as far as I understand it, these were an iron trade item with the natives, and uh, they would have used this in their longhouses. I don't think this is damaged at all. I, I think that there probably was an opening here, and then they could have slipped things over that to be used uh, for, to hang things on the walls. Super cool iron trade item, 1600s, and uh, in relatively very good shape. Can you imagine what they would have hung on this 400 years ago? Incredible. Wow, look at this one. And it does not appear to be broken at all. Wow. It's so thin and pointy. Look at that. Uh, my friend is saying it's a Lavana. Pretty triangular, there's no scoop out in the bottom or anything. And that is a beauty. Year 800 to 1000, so over 1000 years old. It's so small, it must have been for a small game, right? I would assume. That is a beauty. Just sitting right on the surface. There's gotta be more, right? Worked flint everywhere here. Beauty, wow. So this day really kicked off by finding a lot of the same things that we found on the last trip. Stone points, iron artifacts, and arrowheads and jewelry cut up out of brass kettles. And that bigger bangle, according to my friend, is one of the largest he's ever seen. It would have been worn as a piece of jewelry, which is just so amazing. That being said, some of the things I'm about to find in this video, I didn't even know you could find with a metal detector, and honestly, I still can't believe it. All right, well we have a, a little kettle brass point here that's like very different. As they were cutting up these kettles, they wouldn't have all been able to be perfect triangles. So this one would have had a little V at the bottom of it, which would have been fine. It would have slipped into the end of the shaft. 
of the arrow. And it looks like either this this was this wasn't like that originally, right? That was probably damaged. Hit a bone and busted off, something like that. And the hole's in the right spot to be a kettle point and not a bangle, which would have been up here. Super cool. Ah! There's a bead sitting here too. Oh man. All right, well, I just got a great target and uh, it winds up being this, which after speaking with the expert, you know, he's not quite sure, but it was very clearly a piece of kettle brass uh, cut up. You can still see where the cut marks kind of go past their intended uh, shape there. It's a little bit curled up here and they've poked a hole here. Um, so, you know, perhaps maybe something to be worn. Not sure. But that uh, is a really, really cool piece. And as I was sitting here waiting for the wind to die down, I just spotted this. Black. Are they usually black? The bead? Awesome. Well, that's my first bead and my first whatever the heck this thing is. <laughs> awesome. You're going to have to educate me on these uh, off camera here. So I just found this myself. This is a brass bead. Um, again, made out of the kettle brass. Would have been strung on sinew, I would guess, or string. Uh, but this is uh, what they're calling a conical point, like a bird point with arrow, arrowhead, right? And um, how would have this been affixed with the uh, pine pitch and sinew? Pushed right on. Cool. So, as I've learned today, tinkler cones are open at the end, whereas this one is very, very tightly closed to a point. So cool. Uh, well, it's right on the surface, and I called out, hey, I got a button. And he said, really? Uh, so it seems like these are pretty uncommon here. It's just got a little cross hatch pattern on there, but it's clearly very old. You can see the seam in the back. What'd you get? He said, I got something awesome. If I can figure it out. Oh, geez. It's a rock. Hmm. Shut up. It turns black. He's saying, he's saying that this is graphite, and they would crush it up in a mortar and pestle, mix it with sunflower oil, and it, it was literally war paint. That's, that's cooler than my button. Here's my button. <laughs> it's not as cool as war paint. Oh, that's for me? Man. So this, I mean, this isn't, this is like 1700s, right? 18th century? No, is this 1600s? The button? Oh, awesome. Oh, this, yeah, so we were talking about that earlier. These were on the, uh, the bottom portion of the legs of the pants. Awesome. All right, hey. He just told me to rub it on my hand. All right, let's see what happens. Unbelievable. I thought you were pulling my leg there for a minute. Wow, that's the coolest thing today. A piece of graphite destined to become black war paint. They would have been making red paint as well, putting it on their faces and bodies uh, in the time of war. And unfortunately, during this time period, uh, there was a lot of that going on. Quite possibly one of the most incredible things I've ever witnessed being found with a metal detector. And I'm still at a bit of a loss for words about it. At this point in the day, we are joined by a third person, so some of the things that are being shown were found by him. This trip ended much like the last trip ended. Well, what do we think? Is there a hole in it? Did you look at it? There's a hole. Beauty. I don't have my shovel to straighten it out. Here, I'll use this. Awesome, that might be the uh, longest and skinniest I've seen of a kettle brass point. They ever uh, design, you know, etch these or draw, you know? No? They probably would have been making a lot of them all at once, right? <laughs> awesome. So, I just, uh, you know, I'm running the XP Deus, and usually I run a pretty low frequency, but I've been hearing all day, you gotta bump up that frequency higher, you'll find smaller stuff. So I finally listened and I got a little 
uh, brass bead. Teeny tiny, obviously very purposely made. Uh, very tight seam. And uh, they would have been using this for jewelry. Beautiful. Goes along with my little glass one I got earlier. Right in an ant's nest. See the ants crawling all over it. Uh, another conical point. You can see how sharp it is. It would have been affixed to the end of a wooden shaft. Just like um, the triangle shaped ones, but uh, just a different design. Super cool. Man. Ants. Alright. Uh, my buddy found this, and I don't even know what it is yet, but he called me over to film it. I guess I gotta spot it, huh? Oh, it's way out? Give me a clue. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Another Jesuit ring. You want me to clean it off and do the whole thing? All right. So my very limited knowledge on these, there it is. Wow, this one is beautiful. My, my jeans will are like sandpaper. Here you do it. <laughs> Last time he was insistent on me rubbing it on my jeans, but my pants uh, would not be helpful. Wow. So that's an IHS, a lot more visible IHS with a cross on top. And you were saying that all of them that you found here in the past have been broken. And this one is as well. Incredible. Good for you, buddy. I won't ask you how many this makes it. 71? Uh, it's like they're growing out here like the corn. <laughs> so this... Uh, trade site is earlier than the one we were at last time uh, so this is the very early part of the 1600s you just said that the IHS is, is one of the earliest designs that you can find and uh, I remember you telling me last time that these little ridges on the sides let you know that it's even older and you just found this right now I guess I better open my eyes a little bit more good for you buddy another Jesuit ring with that, uh, that concludes all of the footage that I was able to get that day of finding the various artifacts. We do a quick wrap up. All three of us combine everything we found that day and it is quite the pile of treasures. Man, all right, well, as you can tell, we've, we've moved into the forest. No, we're just in a little patch of trees here in the field. And um, we've got everything displayed out here and holy, smokes between the three of us uh, th this is the accumulation of the kettle kettle points and uh, this one I've never seen in person before does that have a name barbed is that what it's called and then these are all conicals which I don't think we found any of last time uh, and this one specifically is awesome because it you know it impacted something and got all bent over super cool two stone points this one I learned recently is broken. That the bottom of it here is broken off. Lavana and uh, Madison. Beautiful. My two little beads, one is glass, one is copper from a kettle. We don't really know what this is, but it was probably a decoration jewelry of some kind. Some beads or possibly hair pipes. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> a couple more of those hangers. Big pile of brass here. A couple pieces of clay pipe. The Jesuit ring, which slightly different design than the one I found last time. This one is stamped, whereas mine was hand uh, engraved. Sitting on a piece of graphite, which may be the coolest thing that uh, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know anything about that. And you know, you rub it on your hand, it's still on me a little bit, and it turns you black. Uh, used for war paint. In incredible. Uh, and lastly, down here, a whole bunch of lead. There's a bunch of uh, busted off sprues, musket balls, some that impacted something. And I've got my cassock, or cossack, my K-sock button. And uh, this might be too, not sure. And I almost forgot this trigger from a trade gun was also found um, at this site. This was almost certainly owned by a native, right? Man, how long, do, how long were we out today? So I got here around nine, about five hours worth. Crazy. I mean, 
If you had told me that we would find this much stuff, I wouldn't believe you. In five hours? Most people don't find this much stuff in their entire life. Slow day. <laughs> Crazy. Thank you again. I, I, I made a point to not say, say thank you so much today. But thank you again. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video of my second trip to the Native American trade site. And there's already been talks of possibly a third trip. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully I'll see you next week for another new video, more than likely back up in the mountains of Vermont.